Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to make a quick video on what I would order during this Bamboo Lab sale. I just did a quick little bit of math, that's why I'm holding this pencil here, because I did it the old style way, because you guys are on my phone. I have 7,826 hours of print time on these four printers behind me. These are all the spare parts that I've replaced in the past two to three years. Three years, I've had that P1P right there for three years, so we're close to it, I think. About like right after Bamboo Lab opened up. Anyways, what's important to know is that I have replaced close to probably around 100 spare parts at this point, maybe maybe less than that, but pretty close to it. And I think I could provide some valuable info to those of you who maybe just got a printer or have had one for a little bit and are starting to see the point where like you need to order parts and you don't know what to order. Here's my most common. I'm going to start from like most most common to least common. And I'm going to do this off the top of my head. And if I forget anything, I'll put it in the description and then I will try and link everything down in the description. But uh, realistically, you should be able to find it on Bamboo Lab's website without any issue. So first up, the thing that I replace the most on these uh, machines. Now this is going to be for the AMS system and the P1S, P1P, or even the X1C. Now, to uh, get started on this, I gotta thank my Patreon members, Everett Hope and Caden Weiler, and anybody else who wants to join Patreon, links down in the description below, or if you wanna become a channel member, help the channel grow, that would be cool too. Um, and then Discord, uh, Twitter I think is down there, or X and something else, and it doesn't really matter. What, the, you guys are here to get some parts, right? Things that you might wanna look for. So the things that I've replaced the most here, actually, believe it or not, the printer itself, I haven't replaced too many parts on it. I haven't had to do a ton of maintenance on it. Well, I have, but I haven't had to replace a bunch of parts that were wear and tear items that you would typically expect. When I first bought these, I thought for sure the printer was gonna have a bunch of spare parts needed, so I bought a bunch when I first got my printers. It turns out the AMS is really what causes you the most trouble. Most people are gonna end up getting an AMS because of the multicolor. And I mean, it's easy to get a whole bunch of them listed out. I mean, I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six AMS units and four printers. And I plan to add more AMS units in the future maybe. And uh, as you add those to your system, you run into more and more problems because you have more and more systems, right? So the, the take this, as you will, most of the replacement parts are for the AMS. Whether or not you expected that, I don't know, but it definitely shocked me at first because I didn't prep that way. I prepped for the printer needing parts, especially coming from like an Ender series or something where the hot end was basic garbage. Now, the first thing I'm gonna start with here is probably PTFE tubes. This is something a lot of people overlook or they don't really think about because, oh, it's just a PTFE tube, I'll be fine. I have blown through, I don't know, probably about 5,000 feet of PTFE tube at this point. Um, it's easy to kink it and then it causes problems or it doesn't insert right, so you gotta cut it and then you cut it too short or whatever it may be. Like PTFE tubes are kind of just a burnable and you're gonna use a lot of it. I don't recommend buying the pre-cut pieces for the AMS, uh, even though they, the AMSs do come with one, uh, one set of replacement tubes. I would definitely pick up some replacement tube in like the, 4,000 meter or millimeter length or whatever is whatever the longest length bamboo does and you just cut it to the size you want because it's easy to just rip cut you get more for less and uh, I that's just a smarter way to do it another thing I've replaced a lot is PTFE couplers and those are the little black to blue pieces which I could grab off the printer but they're on the back of all the printers and they're what connects your main PT, PTFE tube uh, to your AMS hub on the back, uh, those right there, I've replaced a lot of them. They get just kind of filled with grime and dirt. Uh, it just happens over time because the filament does get exposed inside of that and there's metal prongs in there that typically shouldn't be exposed. But if you don't insert the PTFE tube all the way, they can be exposed and that causes issues. Anyways, PTFE tubes, PTFE connectors, big thing that I've replaced a lot of, they cause a lot of issues, but they're easy to replace, they're cheap to replace, right? And Bad Labs website has both of them. The next up on my list is AMS rollers. I replace a ton of rollers. I've probably replaced 15 to 20 of them. And these are the little rollers on the back here. Let me grab one. I have replaced a ton of, this is the front roller, this is the back roller. I mean, what do you expect, right? This one has rubber on it to help grip the roller. This one doesn't. They wear out extremely easily. Uh, I've replaced a lot of them. Actually, I think this one's brand new and it's already 
not it's not worn too bad but I mean it's definitely probably halfway through its lifespan I think I've had it for a couple months but these right here big one I replace them a lot and they're really irritating to replace because you don't think about it until your AMS isn't spooling um, Next up on that list is feed funnels and AMS feed units, which I'll grab one of those. I've only made a video replacing one of these. I've replaced about five or six of them. Um, get, get yourself at least one of these. Um, you can have catastrophic failure or something, especially if filament gets stuck in here. Uh, you can have some problems that might require a little bit more tear down. And at this point, if you're already tearing it down and you just want to resume, swap another one of these in, $35 is quite a hefty price. Or you can buy these, just these gray funnels right here. I think they're like 11 or $15 or something. Uh, they're easy enough to repair. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, you can replace just this funnel part, which is usually what uh, I would do. I've replaced, I think three or four of these. Uh, I've replaced probably about five, to eight of these, I can't really remember. I blow through them pretty quick with how many filament changes and how much I print. But yeah, that's one of them. Uh, the other one that I highly recommend you have on stock is the AMS hub feeder motor. I'm gonna go grab one real quick. I think I know where one is. This is an AMS internal hub motor. I think I need a knife to open this. I just, I'll just open it real quick. Oh, okay, I got it. I would highly, I've replaced since I replaced my first one on that guy right there, that, no, on that one right there, um, I've had to replace two more of these, and they're, I think they're quite a bit, I think like 30 bucks. Well, now I'm gonna need another one. Uh, I think I've replaced, this is my fourth one, so I've replaced three of these, and I know I just dropped it, it, sh it, it should be fine, I don't see any damage or anything. Um, the motor should, is pretty well shockproof, I think. We'll find out one day when I need to replace it. Um, if this goes out, your AMS is totally done. You, there's nothing you can do about it. You're gonna have to get one of these to replace it. You're just kind of SOL. Uh, so if this does burn up, which is pretty likely, this is the motor that assist feeds every single piece of filament and filament change that you put into that thing. This is the most used part on your printer. It, it seriously is like, without it, you're not gonna print, uh, at least from an AMS standpoint. This completely bricks your printers. If you're relying on an AMS, it fails mid print, you're screwed. There's no easy way to replace this. It's a pain, it takes about an hour. I can probably do it now in about 20, 30 minutes, but uh, realistically, like once this goes, toast. There's nothing you can do about it. Sorry to, sorry to tell you that. Highly recommend you pick some up, or at least one. Have it, one of each one of these things on hand. I, I, you will regret if you don't. Next up on my AMS parts list to replace or have replacement parts for is, uh, I, don't remember, I don't remember what the part is called. When you lift up the AMS, the, sh the internal shell of it, there is a board on the back of it. Uh, I would recommend you pick one up. It's not necessary. I've replaced two because I'm an idiot and I'm incompetent and I'm human. Uh, sometimes I, you just get in a rush, you forget, you pull it back up and it just rips one of the connectors off and you just SOL. I'd pick one up. Uh, I, I'll try and link it down below. It depends on what version of the AMS you have, which board you buy. So I, I don't want to link it down below um, just because you might pick up the wrong version. But uh, there is a board on the very back of the printer near where the PTFE tube comes in or the back of the AMS where the PTFE tube comes in that I would highly recommend you pick up at least one of. Uh, it can really save you. I don't even know if these parts are on sale, but with people buying printers because they're on sale, I would highly recommend you have these parts. Uh, it's, it's screwed me over more than one time. Next up on my list is the AMS hub or the filament buffer on the back. And this is more of a printer part. So there's a filament buffer on the back of this that you guys obviously are aware of. Uh, if you use a spool, I don't even think it goes through the buffer. If I'm not mistaken, it just goes right into the, yeah, it just goes right on the printer. There's a buffer on the back, it's spring-loaded. Um, they, I've replaced four of them. And it really just has to do with like the amount of changes you get. It gets built up with dust and you kind of forget it's back there because it's behind the printer. And if it gets to the point like where the spring's slapping a lot, it either needs cleaned or it needs replaced. Uh, Cause that slap, believe it or not, will end up damaging the sensor inside of it, which should just be, I think it's just like a limit switch or something. But uh, I've had it, break the, the sensor, like the spring just kind of gets bad. 
the more times the spring is used, the plastic around it gets kind of brittle and dull. Uh, and I've had them break. Granted, I've had some of these machines, I've had these two machines for, this one's over two years old, this one's close to three, I believe. So it, it's a little bit different, but at the same time, like I would have an extra filament buffer, uh, the little gray part on the back or an extra AMS hub, just in case, because uh, if that goes out, you also can't print uh, unless you go straight to spool, and that means you can't use your AMS anymore. And it's just, it's just inconvenient, it's kind of a pain, uh, but I definitely recommend you have one. Next up on that list uh, is another printer part. Of course, I always recommend having an extra nozzle and an extra set of extruder gears, especially uh, if you're gonna buy one of these enclosed printers, I, up I recommend you upgrade to a hardened steel nozzle and hardened steel extruder gears. They go hand in hand. I actually haven't had to replace any extruder gears except on this guy right here. Uh, I, had it, I left the original extruder gears in there and eventually they wore out. And then I had to put uh, hardened steel ones in there just because, and then I ended up blowing those out uh, by printing PACF a lot and it just gummed up the extruder and there's nothing I could do I had to replace it and I also had to replace part of the extruder housing like I had to replace the entire uh, hardened steel gear extruder uh, unit not just the gears inside I replaced the whole black part um, so I'd recommend having at least either a set of gears or a whole entire unit which is the black and compass part and you just take the screws out and pop it in or you could take out the whole unit and just replace the gears either way I'd have an extra one just in case and of course, I'd have an extra nozzle. Um, I'd recommend the complete unit for, of the nozzle that comes with the fan, the heat sink, everything all in one. Uh, it's, it's easier to repair than trying to put on your own, you know, uh, thermal paste and get your hot end attached and your thermistor attached and all of the, the parts and components, the heater. Like it's just easier to swap out the, the whole unit. I'd recommend having one of those. Some honorable mentions that I'd recommend you have are the nozzle cutters, um, not nozzle cutters, the filament cutters. They, your printers do come, I think, with two extra, maybe three extra cutters. Um, if you plan to do a lot of multicolor, those are the parts inside of the arm right there. Uh, you press that in and it cuts the filament. Uh, they tend to break off and people tend to forget. Most of the time when I've had to replace a nozzle, it's actually been because that filament cutter uh, cut the filament, but it chipped off and the filament uh, metal piece got stuck in the filament and it continued to extrude through and it got stuck in the nozzle. You can repair that, but at the same time, it's like by that point, typically your nozzle is pretty burnt anyways. You might as well just swap them. Uh, so that's one part I'd recommend you have if you don't have any more nozzle wipers as well. As kind of useless as those are, it's nice to have a couple extra. You do get some with your printer, um, but I would recommend at least having some extras outside of that if you have more than just, you know, one printer. If you have, if you have more, the more printers you have, the more parts you're going to need. Trust me, been there, done that. Uh, I, I, I'm going to tell you, you're going to need more printer stuff. Build plates. The gold ones wear out. The black ones will wear out. Uh, they're just PEI. You can wash them as many times as you want. Eventually, they'll stop sticking. If you have a ton of print hours, I've replaced two build plates on this one, which is 2,600 hours. Uh, I have the gold ones on here. I've had to replace them twice. One was my own fault. And the other one was just actually from use. I replaced it, I think right around like 1800 hours. Um, one side of it just stopped sticking and I couldn't remember which side it was. So I marked it with a big X. And I used the other side for a long time until eventually uh, I destroyed it on accident uh, going too hot. And then the nozzle drug across it because it missed some steps and screwed it up. But that was my fault. Um, definitely an extra bed just in case. It can be a smooth, it can PIE, just an extra bed so you're not done printing. And then other than that, there's really not a whole lot of parts uh, that you really need for the printer itself. I have 7,826 hours across these four printers. I've replaced nozzles maybe five-ish times, maybe. And I'm pretty sure three of those times were my own fault. Um, it had nothing to do with the machine running out. Like this printer right here, it's I think it's still running one of the original nozzles it has. Um, because I took it out because it was burnt at one point and I just cleaned it up and put it back in because I didn't want to waste a brand new one. My, the nozzles will last as long as you take care of them. If you're printing abrasives, they won't last. Uh, you're gonna need more extruder gears. You're gonna need more hot ends. But in general, if you're just printing PLA, PETG, ABS, stuff like that, a nozzle should last you a long time, assuming you have no catastrophic collisions like the poop chute filling up or something like that. But if you have like abrasives or things like that where 
you're going to burn through more nozzles. I recommend getting them. If you're going to have PLA, PETG, ABS, ASA, stuff like that, as long as it's not like glass fiber or something, like if it's just straight plastic, you should be fine. Even wood PLA is like, I notice it doing more, but it just burns more than abrasives because wood's not really stronger than steel, so it doesn't do all that much. But in general, if you're just going to print normal filaments, like you don't need as many nozzles as I bought originally, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to need all of these because my enders were, I was used to the enders always needing them. But these are much better. Uh, I really haven't had to replace that many nozzles in terms of other things I've had to replace. Like these rollers right here, they're kind of expensive for what they are. Like this is $11. I think it's like four or five. And like, I've had to replace too, too many of these. Like I have a whole case full of these. I think I have like an extra 10 of these right now. And I have like an extra seven or eight of these right now. Cause I just burn through them. Especially if you use cardboard spools, like cardboard eats through them pretty bad. Um, these right here, if you use a lot of abrasives uh, or you do a lot of filament changing and a lot of filament swaps, like that funnel is gonna burn up really quick. I recommend you have at least a couple funnels if you don't wanna pay for the whole unit. Uh, I had a piece of filament like literally explode inside one of mine, which is why I did a replacement on like the whole unit. And I had filament chunks all up in these gears and everything and it just was a pain to try and fix. So I just replaced the entire thing. I didn't wanna deal with it. AMS hub units, you're gonna need them. Uh, maybe the boards on the back of the AMS, but realistically most of these parts are based on the AMS because that's your biggest wear and tear item. As you have more of them, uh, you're gonna need more and more parts for them. They are easily the most wearable, most terrible, and it's just there's just no way around it, right? Um, I actually don't keep desiccant in any of these. That's why I didn't recommend desiccant for any of this uh, or replacement desiccant. Like I wouldn't buy bamboo. You can buy a ton of it on Amazon for a lot cheaper. So I wouldn't really worry about getting desiccant from Bamboo Lab. But in general, that's what I would buy if I was gonna rebuy everything. I'll leave links for pretty much everything I listed down in the description below. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Now get out there and print some shit.